So we're about halfway through Tatar Giroshi by now, and uh, things are getting sad, and I don't like it, but we're going to keep going because the story is great. So uh, yeah, let's keep continuing this traumatic journey. It's great. It's going to be so fun. I went home and washed the day's sweat off in the shower. Normally, I could reset everything by taking a shower and forgetting all the bad things. Bro, mood. But that didn't happen today. I got out of the shower to find fresh underwear placed neatly in the laundry basket. Normally, I didn't stop to think about it, but today, I felt happy at my mother's consideration. At the same time, however, it made me realize how much Satsuko must be suffering. The very moment I was appreciating this gentle kindness, Satsuko might be getting bruised by her uncle's cruel words. And probably worse, because that dude's a monster. I went up to the second floor and shut myself in my bedroom. Then, facing my desk, I folded my arms. My topic of thought, of course, was Satsuko. We thought that if we could just get a public agency to intervene in the, night, right, eh, in the right way, the problem would be solved. But with what Coach said, I didn't think it would be so easy. Satsuko was obstinate, and she would stubbornly deny the abuse and try to endure it. And that was an act of atonement towards Satsuko who had protected her before and then run away. As long as she thought that way, the situation wouldn't be so simple. But earlier, before coach, I made a clear declaration. If I thought Satsuko was in danger, then I would do what I had to do. In the end, that meant I was just going to wait and see, too. Nevertheless, I thought I'd draw a clearer line than coach or my friends had. If the time came, I would report it. Over the phone. Given S <laughs> Oh, I thought it was going to like continue going. <laughs> given Satsuko's personality, she might criticize me if she found out. But I believed it was ultimately the best decision. Wait, Ichimabara. Would that really be all it took for the problem to end? Say that I reported it to a public agency like the Child Consultation Center. What if they stuck to their wait-and-see attitude like last year again? Last year, they decided to do just that, and the situation improved temporarily. But then the aunt, thinking herself a laughingstock, increased her tormenting in secret. In the end, things became more underhanded than ever before. This year, it was her uncle. I had just seen him for the first time today but the man seemed much more direct, much more violent than the word underhanded could imply. He wasn't like their aunt. No, not that subtle. He was more direct. He might also assault her with punches and kicks. That can easily be discerned from the bruises and such I saw in Satsuko's body. Shh, you're too naive, Kichimabara. However heroic it may seem to report what was happening, if it doesn't save her, then it doesn't mean anything. Reporting things to a public agency was only one option, and leaving everything to them would be dangerous. We would need something more to guarantee Satsuko's safety. Bro, where's your... I, I, I can't disagree with where your mind's going right now because this dude's a monster, but it's a dangerous thought process, my dude. I scratched madly in my head, thinking, then tilted it back, wanting at least a little bit of calm. The memories of angry arguing with my friends today came to mind. I was embarrassed I hadn't realized it until Rena said something. She was right. My house is big. Compared to all the houses with the straw-thatched roofs in Hinamazawa, it was really big. We didn't actually have empty rooms. I've never thought that we were affluent, but also never that we were poor. I just didn't admit it because people would think I was arrogant. But maybe my family really is wealthy. Listen, for your dad being a hentai artist, yeah, I think you guys are pretty well off. We had a few rooms we could lend the Satsuko. The guest rooms are only in use when people relate to my dad's job come and stay every once in a while. Plus, if we cleaned up a few of the rooms my dad used for storage, they could work for her as, her as well. As for food expense, that might have been a more serious problem than a kid like me could imagine. Lunch every day would be manageable. All of our friends would just have to bring a little bit more for lunch than they usually did. With everyone pecking at everyone else's food anyway, it would be manageable. For breakfast and dinner, though, that would have to be up to Mom. I would need to convince her to lend Satsuko more than just a room. Of course, I don't even think convincing her of that would be easy. About how much did it cost for one person to eat? How many tens of thousands of yen per month? <laughs> In 1983? A lot less than today. <laughs> they couldn't complain about it if I shouldered that, could they? I only had 10 or 20 thousand yen in savings, but it was something. I actually had even more, thanks to New Year's gifts and such, but my parents had taken all that and put it into a fixed time deposit. If I get access to that, it should add up to a lot of money. If I got that far, I should ask Mion and Rena to share some of the burden. Of course, I wouldn't depend on that. Rena got mad at me, didn't she? About how I shouldn't just shove responsibility onto others. I'd have to ask for help. Even so, I'd basically be saving her myself. 
I would follow through on it. Oh, but it wouldn't be only food expenses. There are a lot of other things that you couldn't do without, like baths and laundry. My mother was awfully methodical and strict about cutting out inefficiencies, and for once that was troublesome. She might even make reference to the money it would cost for the detergents not to go to use for her own clothes. I couldn't think about only about food expenses. I needed more money. Hey, wait, Gage, my bar. Since when was this all about money? Even if you could afford it, you need your parents' permission first. They've been looking after a young girl for a really long time. What would I say to persuade them? Just calm down a little bit, Gage, my bar, and you'll realize right away that you can't. Even if you ask them seriously, they would tell you to call police. Even if you manage to gain their empathy, why should the Mybra family have to shoulder all the burden by itself? That's what would happen. That was it. It was very sad and frustrating, but no matter how much I wanted to help, my res resolution alone couldn't save anything. Yep, unfortunately. Money makes the world go round, my dude. I felt frustrated. I believe my feelings were stronger than anyone else's. I even thought they were stronger than coaches. And yet... At that point, there were two knocks at my door and mom poked her head inside. Oh, my dude's been focused in his brain thinking. As someone financially dependent on his parents, I shouldn't say this, but... They just sat around doing nothing and food suddenly appeared. <laughs> the dream. It felt so natural to me that I shamelessly thought of it as the responsibility of the parents who gave birth to me. But when I realized that natural thing was actually a right, I came to realize just how hard it was to grant that privilege to others. Even the boring meal in front of me, no better than whatever was, had more meaning than that uh, than that tonight. I thought that said thought for some reason. I was confused. There was food for three on the table right now, for Dad, for Mom, and for me. I couldn't imagine how hard it would be to add another place at the table. Think, Kate Shimabara. If it was hard to make food for four, then just think about how four people could eat food made for three. Oh. I changed around the way I thought, and with that I began to consider an unthinkably bold plan. That's right. I didn't need to get my parents' permission. She should just live here in secret. <laughs> How are you going to do that, man? How would you pull that off? I'm curious. How are you going to pull this off? I got upset when I found out a while ago. But if I remembered right, if you climbed out the window, then shimmied down the first floor roof of the gutter, you can go in and out of the house directly from my room. Latko's physical ability far surpassed my own, so it would be even easier for her. I hadn't even thought about it, but her living here secret was actually a necessity. <laughs> I'd only have to bring Satsuko to my house when the public agency said they would wait and see. In other words, if Satsuko's uncle continued to be her guardian. If, in such a situation, word got out that she was here, her uncle would barge in and drag Satsuko back with him. Her uncle was her rightful guardian, so my parents would hand her over without an argument, no doubt. So, I need to keep a secret that she was living here. It needs to be a secret, and having my parents' help would mean a lot. But guys, deceive your allies first, like they always say. Is that a saying? I can, I can see that being a saying, actually. Okay. Persuading my parents was an unrealistic proposition, so I'll search for a way to have her live here in secret. When I was around, she would just have to be really quiet in my room on the second floor. <laughs> Dude, this, this would not work out, man. The issue was the daytime. If she was hiding from her uncle, then she shouldn't go to school. It might be lonely, but not going would be the better option. I could easily teach Sakto the stuff she learns in her grade. Actually, during school, I mostly help all the younger kids out rather than studying my own stuff. During the day, I would need to go to school, so I wouldn't be at home. My parents respected my privacy now that I was this age, so they wouldn't go swoop, snooping around in my room while I was gone. I think. But they might hear somebody living in there. <laughs> if she hold herself up in my room, it'd be okay, right? If my parents did come, thanks to where the second floor was, she could hear their approach from the sound of them coming up the stairs. And there'd be a little bit of time before they got all the way up. I estimated a few seconds, that she'd be able to hide herself in the closet. And if they opened the closet, Wait, wait, KG. Yes, please. Something doesn't make sense, like the entire plan. She can't go to school, then what will she do for lunch? <laughs> Calm down already. I could just leave her my own lunch, couldn't I? I should just go to school without lunch and get everyone else to split theirs with me. Okay, that's good. No more contradictions or oversights, right? The entire plan is an oversight, my dude. Oh, breakfast and dinner. Get somewhere I get her to go without breakfast. I can go with two meals a day when I sleep in on Sundays, after all. Every night, I'd pretend as though I had a bigger appetite than ask for a bigger helping. And then, I could just somehow give part of that to Satsuko. As a test. 
I stood up from my seat with my plate of fish in my hands. どうしたのケイチ。ご飯は座って食べなさい。うん、うん。ちょっと気分が変えたくなってさ。自分の部屋で食べてもいいかな。ボロボロ落として汚すぞ。食事は食卓で食べなさい。うん。ごめん。Hey, wait. I only tried to take away one plate of fish and they ganged up on me. All they're telling you is just sit down, bro. Like, they don't want your room smelling like fish. Shit. In reality, it was impossible for me to smuggle food away without my parents knowing about it. But it must have been worth taking the time to think about. There must be some trick, some method to avoid them realizing. Even if I can't think of one today, I might think of one tomorrow. My appetite was rapidly fading, so I finished early and went back to my room. I went back there and tried to think about from Satsuko's point of view. For example, let's say my parents were coming up the stairs right now. I gotta hide. This, this guy, this guy, man. I opened the closet. Clatter, clatter. It didn't open quietly. Hey, wait. It didn't always open real smooth and quiet. Why was it suddenly doing this now? Was this house even structurally safe? Was it already showing signs of dilapidation? Bro, you've been there for like a month. Or were the hinges just not greased well enough? Did I just apply some lubricating wax? The sound itself may have been soft, but it left me uneasy as to whether my parents would detect it happening when they climbed the stairs. But this was an easy problem. I could do something about it. Yeah, man, get some WD 40, you good? I just had to fix it up a little bit so it didn't make noise anymore. For now, I'll close myself in the closet as though I had successfully hid. I basically always left my foots on out on the floor. I couldn't think of any real reason my parents would want to go in my closet. Even so, there still might be some reason they would. I might need to construct some sort of camouflage so that she wouldn't be noticed even if they did open it. But the more she worried about that, the less time she'd have to actually hide, meaning it would be more likely they'd hear a noise. And then, I suddenly had to go to the bathroom. The bathroom? The need to use the toilet, so obvious, and yet such a fatal flaw. Like, the entire plan, it's just one big fatal flaw, my dude. Like, your heart's in the right place, but like... No. The only bathroom is on the first floor. Even bigger reason to not do this. It'd be absolutely impossible for her to use it without my family realizing. I might need to set up a portable toilet, like a chamber pot. I <laughs> Satsuko would hate it, and so she could go in my room. That's so weird, man. But the stench would be pretty terrible. Anyone sensitive would probably notice the smell without even coming into the room. The bath was okay, though. She could just take a bath when my parents were out. But I couldn't do anything about the toilet. When her stomach started to hurt, my parents were lazing around downstairs, she'd be in trouble. It was then that I noticed that I'd been clawing at my head with both hands. Oh, that's... Mm, mm -mm, that's not good. Remember, you were clawing out your throat, uh... Last time you had some bad, uh... Some bad juju going on there, buddy. I sat down in a dark closet with my knees against my chest. I buried my face in them and tore at my hair. The more I thought, the more contradictions popped up. The more I thought, the more things failed. The more I worried, the more I was reminded of how little power I actually had. My back started to hurt from staying in a cramped place for so long. But if I was to shelter Satsuko, I would need to force her to feel this pain. No, man. Like, bro. Such a... Just going... That's just spiraling down, man. You gotta... You gotta got stop. To live in such a dark, narrow, suffocating place forever. But it would still be better than being abused by our uncle. Or so I wanted to think. It got hard to breathe, so I gave in and crawled out of the closet. I looked clock and to my surprise it was 3 30 in the morning dang it felt like so little time but it was so unbelievably long when i realized that i was slammed with a terrible urge to sleep as if the time had only just caught up with me i didn't have enough strength to fight it and i fell flat onto my futon i just can't go to sleep like this i'm wasting time that means i'm taking the same wait and see attitude that me and coach and everyone else did yeah but you can't not sleep man i need to keep worrying about how to rescue satsuko for a minute or even a second longer than everyone else isn't there a better way? Isn't there a better way? That one phrase I spoke to myself swirled around and round in a spiral, and steadily took over my entire mind. During my last moment of consciousness, I thought, there were a lot of blind spots in what I considered tonight, but I absolutely wasn't wrong for having those ideas. Tomorrow, I would suggest this bold plan to the others. Mian might be able to help somehow, and Renna was really sharp, so she might have a good suggestion. Above all, we need to rescue Satsuko once again, with everyone helping out. I felt pathetic for letting myself fall asleep. Sorry, Satsuko. Bro, it's, it's 3.30 in the morning. Like, you gotta sleep. <laughs> what are you doing? The ceiling blurred into view. It was hot. There was a thin layer of moist sweat on me. The voices of the cicadas permeating my room were somehow grating to my head. Oh, 
know, man, but it's really great. I remember to say it was a weekday and quickly brought myself to consciousness. And then finally I left out of bed. The clock read a little before 10. Ooh, you slept in, man. I was totally late. When I wandered downstairs, my mom would get mad at me. There's nothing I can do, though. After reviewing the schedule for the school day for a moment, I suitably rearranged the stuff in my bag. I hurried and got dressed and went down the stairs. Ugh. There's no sign of my parents anywhere. Maybe they went out somewhere together. So that's how it was. My mother had probably woken me up once this morning, but then I fell back asleep without remembering it. I hate doing that, man. Like when you wake up in the morning and then you fall right back to sleep. The worst. My parents, thinking I'd gone to school, left. Something like that probably happened. I went to the front door and as I expected, it was locked. It looked like I was right. It was further evidence of my speculation being correct. When I realized my parents weren't here, I suddenly felt less like I had to rush to get to school. Just stay home, man. F it. <laughs> there was one portion of breakfast left in a dining room. Probably mine. The milk they'd poured in it had gone warm since a while ago. Ugh, gross. And I realized how hard it would be to sneak food for Satoko. Yesterday I cried. No. Well, thinking back on it, food wasn't the only issue in that regard. I wasn't in a position where I could care for Satsuko by myself anyway. It's such a heavy thing just to save a single person. Honestly, true. Very, very true. I'd seen this on TV and comics all the time. Those feel-good words about how you'll save your friends for such and such. Was that why I ran my mouth like that, swearing to save her because I wanted to feel good about it? No, that absolutely wasn't true. Because the fact that I was I couldn't save her. Because I didn't want to think like an adult. Like, I couldn't do anything but watch. I had Satsuko to go to school today. I immediately realized that was a meaningless question. Whether or not she did, there wouldn't be a change in the environment she'd been placed in. I couldn't save her, and no one else could either. And we could only pray for a miracle. My dude is, is very focused on this. With a vague goal of getting to school in mind, I suckled she put on my shoes and stumbled out the front door. I'd only overslept by two or three hours, but the sunlight and air felt completely different from what they usually were in the morning. Well, of course they did. Once ten o'clock came around, you could barely call it morning anymore. I didn't feel like walking the same old route to school. I needed to ultimately end up there, but it was like, I didn't want to choose the shortest route, the most proactive one to get to school. But in a more positive light, maybe I wanted some time to walk by myself and think. I had to go to school, partly to make sure Satsuko was safe, but I hadn't come up with any plans yet. Nothing since last night. So the path I took from my house was in the complete opposite direction. If I went this way, I'd pass Rena's house, and the dam site. It'd be quite a detour. I calculated how long of a detour it would end up being, then satisfied with the answer, I started to walk. Ren had brought me to the dam site a few times. One section of it had turned into an unlawful, oversized garbage dump, and Rena really liked going fishing for junk there. Without that, she'd come off as a completely normal girl, too. I can think of a few other qualities she could do without, but whatever. <laughs> Listen, man, she found uh, Colonel Sanders in there. The view quickly opened up wide, and I was hit by a strong wind. There was no shelter here at this big damn site. Maybe it was a good thing I came here, I thought. At the very least, it was more healthy to think about stuff in a place like this instead of my cramped bedroom. I took a deep breath and filled my lungs with the rich, cold air unique to Hinamizawa. Ring, ring. Turned around reflexively. It was a bicycle bell. Concerning where I was standing, I don't think they were trying to get me out of the way. They'd rang the bell because they wanted something from me. Oh, what's up, dude? My boy Tom Taki. Threw me off for a second there that his uh, voice didn't play. Hey, excuse me, you're from Minamzo, all right? Yes, why? I've seen this person around a few times. Right, I remembered. His name, I think, was Tom Taki, a freelance photographer who lived in Tokyo. He would zealously visit Minamzo every season and take pictures. Or so Mian and the others told me, I think. I knew where everything was in my head, but explaining how to get there was difficult. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. That's, uh, my dude's over here visiting, and he forgot his map. Blish. I was a little irritated having been bothered for this, but when I realized it meant my detour actually meant something, that feeling faded quickly. ちょっと口で説明するのは難しいですよ。一緒でよければ連れて行ってあげますけど。え、それは片付けないね。助かるよ。あ、
でもいいのかい君の用事は。It was easier for me too that he was under that impression. I'm Tom Atake, a freelance photographer. I specialize in wild birds and landscapes. I'm still pretty unknown though. It seemed absurd for him to introduce himself when I was just showing him to the shrine. They gave me his name, so I need to give mine back. I'm Maibara. Pleased to meet you, I guess. Maibara Kun, pleased to meet you. He seemed like a pretty silly man, but that felt kind of good considering I'd been suffocating with worry over Satsuko all night. Along the way, Tom Taki-san spoke at length to me about how precious the nature in Hinamazawa was and how it was a treasure trove of rare wild birds, despite my not having asked. I wasn't interested in what he had to say, but he seemed to be enjoying himself, so I left him to it. Tom Taki-san mumbled to himself. He left the spike hole nearby and started to climb the stairs quickly. I didn't have a watch, but as far as my internal clock could guess, it was still a little late in the morning. School wasn't very far from here. Maybe I could kill a little more time until then. With that in mind, I went up the steps in pursuit of Tamataki san. When I reached the top of the long staircase, I arrived at the wide open shrine grounds that were too grand looking for this tiny village. Oh, is he going to. Is he going to meet up um, with Ta Ta Takano? Probably, I'm assuming. Tamataki san? Oh, there he is. Looked like he was supposed to be meeting someone here. Oh yeah, they got lost and ended up being late. He was bowing to a lady who must have been、uh, the person he was meeting, and there she is. That lady, I knew her. Ora, my barakun じゃない。こんにちは。今日は学校はお休みかしら？あれ、なんだ、ケイチ君ついてきたのかい？べ、別にそんなつもりはないですよ。ただちょっと時間つぶしがしたかっただけです。But this means you guys are going to talk about some weird stuff, like you always do every time this happens in the same spot, and then Keiji's going to get all this crap in his brain about how messed up the village is <laughs> again. せっかくお知り合いになれたんだから、今度病気か何かできたら、ちょっぴりだけサービスしてあげようかしらね。I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? <laughs> This lady named Taco san, I kind of didn't remember her. Maybe we'd passed each other on the street a few times, but I was pretty sure this was the first time we talked. Well, this is Hinamazawa. Even if I don't know a person's name, it's not unusual for them to know mine. I glanced at Takano san and saw she had a bag and a camera. So, to say, you're a person who's 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 a person. ジローさんが優しくてほどきをしてくださるだけなのよ。ねえ。んあ,あ<笑>そ,そんなことないよ。高野さんは飲み込みが早いからね。僕の指導なんかなくても、実に自由に撮影をこなせよ。本当さ。あっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっはっ Well, there's certainly one couple you won't get tired of watching. Oh, I just remembered. There's some village festival called Watanagashi or something the day after tomorrow on Sunday. Hinamiza no Mamorigami, Oyashiro Tama ni Kansha Sur Tame, Furu Yuton o Tsumi Kasanete Kuyo Sur. そんなお祭りでしたっけ you nailed it, my friendo. あら、ごめんと。前原君
引っ越してきたばかりにしては博識ねそうお社様に感謝するためのお祭り<笑> Dr. Nsen smiled somehow meaningfully I didn't tell me what part of a festival think o y o s h i r o s a m a needs to be laughed at やれやれ高野さんはでもどうだろうね今年は Oh, they're going to talk about the moiders. The king, she already knows about a, a few of them. So, she's going to talk about the moiders. I know what they meant by their whispered exchange. On the day of Watanagashi, a freak death always occurs, which people call Oishiro Sama's curse, and a disappearance occurs that people call being demoned away. These strange events had happened four years running. And with Tanagashi rapidly approaching the day after tomorrow, Mark the Fifth. Murano Kyutekini Tatario Nasu, Oyashiro Samaka, Kotoshimo Artoste, Hataste, Sono Hoko, Kerunoa, Dareni Nardaro, eh? Oh, Boka, Kokoni Kurtabini, Chanto, my diste, or Saisen, or Ideter, Bokja Naikota, Tashka, eh? My dude's like, yeah, I, I pray and donate money, I'm good. What a so? Kinden, no Oyashiro Samaka. 違法人には特に厳しいって話よ引っ越してきたばかりとはいえ前原君はちゃんと雛見沢に住んでる村人だけど次郎さんは毎年来るだけのただのよそ者さーて今年は見逃してもらえるかしらえひどいなあハハハハハハ Tamataki san was the only one with a pained grin, but we all were smiling, me included. Oyashiro sama, the one who used the curse to kill people involved with the dam construction project one after the next. He killed the dam construction manager, killed Satsuko's parents for supporting it, and the next year he even killed their aunt. If the demoning away was part of that curse, then you could add Satsoshi to the list of victims. As I thought about it, I realized that in the serial freak death incidents, the overwhelming majority had the last name Hojo. Half of the deaths and disappearances come from the Hojo family. The Hojo family lived here in Hinamazawa. Did that mean Oishiro sama punished and cursed them particularly harshly because despite that, they've been in favor of the dam? Satoko no oji ga kaete kita te hanashi wa kiite masu ka? Takano san, who had been enjoying a few words with Tom Taki san, was caught unaware by my sudden inquiry. Ah, gomen nasai? Ima nante? Ah, yeah. Satoko no ryoshin ga. たたり殺されておばもたたり殺されてだったら順番的には次はおじの番かなって思ったんです去年のたたりでおばが無残な死に方をしそれに恐れをなして町に逃げていたやつですよお社様は確か村を捨てて逃げ出そうとするのは許さなかったですよね I had intended to be quite this persistent but those words they just float out my mouth without me thinking about it Right. Oishiro Sama's curse. I didn't believe in something so unrealistic, of course. But the fact was that every year, unfortunate accidents and incidents happened to enemies of the village. Like Takano san said just now, it had happened four times. No one could say there wouldn't be a fifth. Hmm. It's an interesting question. It's true. The past of the past, 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 今年はおじが死ぬか消えるかする可能性は否めないわね。はい、let's make it happen then. Let's go. Let's get this guy out of here. 高野さんは怒るかもしれない不幸を笑うのはよくないよ。And that's why it's funny. <笑><笑>ごめんなさいね。でも、お社様のたたりは私のライフワークだし。<笑> Takano san gave off a mysterious, somehow intellectual impression, and her life's work was mysterious in its own right. She probably really liked inexplicable supernatural phenomena or something. Takano san wa Oyashiro sama no tatari ni kuashi so desu ne. Ano, dou de shou? Hojo no. Ano, kaete kita oji ga tatari ni au kanosei wa. Ara, nani? Sono oji san o koroshitakute shikata ga nai mitai ne. そんなんじゃないです。I mean, it kind of is. You can't really deny it. <笑><笑>うん、どうだろうね。神様の気まぐれ次第だからね。前原君
サンタクロースの正体は知ってる人間の家のパパ。な、なんだ。そういう意味ですか。そりゃそうですよ。どんなものの正体だって最終的には人間です。あ、that's what she's getting at. だってここは人間しかいない世界なんですから、全ての現象は人間で解明できるはずです。あ、ケチ、ケチ、just got it all. I mean, they're kind of like one and the same, right? Santa is pretty much the same as Oyashiro sama. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Oyashiro sama no tatari no shoutai wa nani ka wakaru ka shira? Takano san took a step towards me and gazed into my eyes as she asked. Santa Claus was really the parents of every family's children. If lionizing that legend was a corporate tactic to try and profit during Christmas sales, then what was Oyashiro sama really? Uh, to. Ara, anata ga itta no yo. ここは人間しかいない世界だって。全ての現象は人間で解明できるって。ケイチ君、ここだけの話だよ。高野さんはね、親城様のたたりをめぐる一連の連続開始事件をね、ひなみざの村人が何かの儀式に基づいて行っている
せっかく助けてあげたのにまたお社様のたたりの話が始まっちゃうようん涼しいうちに散策に行きたかったのにな My dude's plans got interrupted. Tom Takasen seemed a little disappointed not to be able to go out on the date he planned since I had brought up a weird topic. But right now, there's something I wanted to ask just for a little bit. And that was about whether Sato's uncle would be chosen for the curse this year. If he was, then another miracle would happen just like last year. A terrible incident would happen again, but it would release Sato from her unfortunate circumstances once more. Ma? <laughs> well, I mean... おそらくあの辺りの人たちが関わってるんだろうなーっていう憶測は持ってるわよ鬼ヶ淵村の歴史を研究していれば自然と至る必然的結末それは誰です What would I do if I knew? I asked that question to the other me deep inside but I got no reply 熱心ねそれを知ってどうするつもりかしら別に。たらあなたにも危険が降りかかるかもしれないわよ5年目のたたりはあなただったりして<笑> got you there my friendo Takano san toying with taboo gave a devilish satisfied smile as though nothing in the world would be more amusing she was probably trying to tease me but I didn't feel like going along with her little game one bit 偉そうな脳書きでもったいぶってますが Takano san だってよくは分かってないみたいじゃないですか、oh, got her I felt a tinge of irritation in Taco San's roundabout way of speaking. But those emotions escaped my mouth like water flowing through a strainer. Even I was surprised how directly I'd spoken out about what I felt. Of course, I wasn't the only one to take him back. Okay, she doesn't mess around, dude. Takano san's tongue poked out of her mouth, and I was convinced that it was long, thin, and split in the middle like a snake's. Jesus. Oh, ふん。I golped firmly and nodded. Tom Taco-san made an exaggerated expression of distress, gave a dry, vague smile, and lit a cigarette. And after I said that, I finally realized why I wanted to know. Alright, so are we just, I guess we're just not figure, finding out what, uh, what they finished talking about. I see you, game. I see you. Not one to give us all the information. Sus game. Many of my classmates were playing freely in the schoolyard. A few of them had just run out of the school building after putting on their shoes and tapping their toes to the ground. It looked like they had just finished eating lunch. From a time manipulating standpoint, I guess I succeeded. A few girls noticed me and came running over. It was only natural they were worried. You'd think if someone wasn't there in the morning, they'd be out the rest of the day. Ma, その... Just, just decide to take a half day. For funsies. The girls exchanged glances. I saw a thin shadow fall over their faces and knew the answer without needing to hear them reply. Satsuko was absent today, too. When all was said and done, after being out three days, she'd only come back for one. And now she was out again. Who knew she would come tomorrow? But... Satsuko said to me. 風邪って言ってたよね、うん、みんな家に帰ったらうがいをちゃんとしましょうって先生言ってました Wait a minute, Chi Sensei. That's a little too thick headed, don't you think? You're a teacher, aren't you? Why can't you be more sensitive and catch on to the fact that your people are sending out an SOS? She knows, but she's trying not to let like everybody else worry. But even if she did, there was nothing we could hope for. The most she could do was a home visitation. She didn't have any right to take Satsuko from her uncle into safety. No matter the result, it would end up just like the public agencies, with a wait and see attitude. It would just piss Satsuko's uncle off, and her suffering would only grow deeper. Then wasn't saying she had a cold the best option? I'm glad he put it together in his mind. The girls excitedly scattered into the square. <laughs> Rena was yelling out the classroom window, waving her hand. 
A moment later, Mian and Rika Chan poked their heads out too. Keiichi made o yasumi shimashita kara. Totemo shinpai shimashita no desu yo. Demo yokata. I'm surprised that Rena didn't like go to his house like she normally does when he uh like doesn't show up. Kawairo mo so nani waru ku nai shi. Toriyaizu genki so. I felt a little uncomfortable they were saying that I didn't look sick. But I didn't care that much. どうしたの?そこは遅刻だろ。それとも電車の事故で遅刻したとでも言えば許してくれるのか?ねぼ。ねぼ。ねぼ。ねぼ。ねぼ。ねぼ。ねぼ。ねぼ。ねぼ。
僕に聞くのをやめたのでしょう。Feeling the truth of the teacher would only worsen the situation. Was that why she hadn't said anything? Or was it because she was Satsuko's friend and knew that she was trying to endure the trial of her uncle's abuse in order to get her brother to come home? どうする今のうちに私たちなりの統一見解を出した方がいいかもね。リカちゃんはどうしたいみー。Satsuko's closest and best friend was Rika chan. However much I pretend to be her nini, didn't come close to the amount of time they'd spent together. So I felt like her opinion should be held in the highest regard. Everyone looked startled and turned to me. Now Satsuko was surprised to be surprised to be surprised. But the end, she was surprised to be surprised. サトコは思ってる誰に聞いたのかな監督かサトコはおじのいじめに耐えれば兄が帰ってくると信じることによって今を耐え抜こうとしてるのかもしれないでもそんな思い込みとサトシが帰ってくるのはまっサトコには悪いがそれが現実だ Everyone hung their heads. Everyone was thinking the same thing. Satoko was, Tabun, Dare no Taskemo Yorokobana. Tibun Hitori no Chikara de Taeshi no Bitai to Motel. Demo, Soreo Soncho Ste Arnoga, Hataste Tadashi Daroka, Orewa Omana. It took Satoko Ni Ramare Koto in Naroto. Satoko no Ishi Ni Kakawarazu, Taskerbeki Toki Arto Mo. Orewa Sorega, Ima Janaika to Motel. I told them all about what I saw and how I felt when I went to Satoko's house yesterday. Keiichi-kun was going to be able to talk to you. Of course, I told you that Satoko was going to be able to talk to you. I told you that Satoko was going to be able to talk to you. It's difficult. I'm going to talk to you in the conversation. I would hope so, man. Like... I don't know. I don't know. I, this situation is just rough all, all across the board. I had no confidence, but we had to try. Meanwhile, Rika Chan had her head raised for a while, as if asking for an opportunity to speak. Keiichi, ni, makase masu desu. Eh, ii no kai, Rika Chan? Keiichi wa, koko ni iru dare yori mo Satoko no koto o kangae te imasu desu. Sono Keiichi ga, 話すべき時だと判断したなら僕は文句なんか言わないのですよありがとうミオンもレナもそれでいいかミオン seemed to hesitate not knowing if she should agree but when she saw Rena's firm nod she made up her mind it did the same よし行くぞミオンうん Only Chi Sensei was in the teacher's lounge of course, there's just a plate of curry on her desk. I love that. We didn't see the principal anywhere. The schedule on the blackboard under the principal's name said, Training, going straight home. Our principal's sense of justice was too strong. Satoko's problems wouldn't be solved with something so vague. Maybe it was a stroke of good luck that he wasn't here. When the teacher saw me and I come in, she closed up her curry bento, saving the rest for later. She told us to take a seat in the chairs directly in front of the principal's seat. I hadn't sat in this chair since doing the paperwork for transferring in. The two of us sat there uncomfortably before the teacher walked over carrying a notebook and a ballpoint pen and sat in front of us. Maebara-kun, today I was on the weekend, but did you have anything? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Really? I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. She narrowed her eyes at me in suspicion. I was sure of it. She wanted to talk about Satsuko. First, Neither me nor I had anything to say in response. But the teacher proceeded, not minding. Mian looked down and remained silent as though she were being lectured. She sent me a quick glance. Everyone had made up their minds. They'd be leaving things to me. Maebara-kun, you don't have to worry about it. 
もしも知っていたら教えてほしいとお願いしているだけです先生先にこっちから質問してもいいですかクラス中で佐都子のどんな噂が飛び交ってるかは知りませんが仮にその噂が真実だったとして先生はどうするつもりですかどどうするもこうするもその話が本当なら放っておけません放っておけないって具体的にはどう放っておけないんですか前原君先生は真面目にお話ししてるんですよ先生こそ俺はすごく真面目な話をしているんですまず答えてください真実だったとしてどう放っておけないんです先生は少し息を吐きながら話をまず状況を確かめるために北条さんのうちを家庭訪問しますおじみとなりつけられて追い返されるかもしれませんねまあいいや仮におじとさとこに会えたとしますそれでそして真意を聞きますその事実が確認できたなら指導します指導って曖昧な言い方はやめてください具体的には何をするんですか Even despite my tone being so provocative, she sensei bit back her emotions and listened calmly. I thought that. I thought then that she was a good teacher. She sensei really did have her students' best interests at heart. But she didn't have the power or the authority to save Satoko. If she let her sense of justice run away with her, the situation could get more complex. Sensei folded her arms, and for a few moments she closed her eyes as though mentally concentrating. And when they opened again, there was a strictness in her eyes I'd never seen before. 児童福祉法という法律がありますこの法律で児童に対する虐待は何人に対しても認められていないことが明記されていますらしいですねそれで沖ノ宮の生活相談所へ通報しますさっき前原君は追い返されると言いましたねこの相談所の職員は必要に応じて警察官を同行させることができます同活には絶対に屈しませんその福祉士というお役所の人は連絡して書類で申請して何日後に助けに来てくれるんです即日です彼らの仕事は児童の安全を緊急に保護することですから知ってますよ緊急性があると判断された場合ですよね認められなかったら先生と同じ指導をして様子見をするんですよね見てるだけ佐都子のおじの機嫌を悪くして佐都子をその場に残したままそれっきりケイちゃんちょっと言い過ぎ嘘はついてないだろう去年だか一昨年だかに自動相談所が来た時がまさにそうだったんだろうその結果どうなった俺よりもミオンや先生の方がよっぽどよく知ってるだろうが My dude is angry I'd said too much I didn't need me on to tell me that I was talking crazy and itching for a fight I was supposed to be telling her about the situation only after I was sure we could save Satsuko, but I basically told her everything right from the start. And she already knew. She sensei looked at the clock, stood up, and picked up the phone at the principal's seat. もしもし、内線の三四五五をお願いします。いいのケイちゃん。本当に。大丈夫かな It was too late. The die had been cast. And we could only pray. あ、お世話になっております。ひなみざわ文庫教諭の知恵と申しますが、指導室の渡辺主事はいらっしゃいますでしょうかはい、ええ。ちょっと休養がございまして、至急、校長と連絡が取りたいのですが、はい。お願いします。緊急とお伝えください。よろしくお願いします。二人に、もう一度だけ聞きます。クラスのみんなの噂は全て本当なんですねはい俺は昨日里子の家に行って実際にどういうことになっているのか見ましたあとは先生に任せてください里子ちゃんはきっと先生が何とかしますなんとかいい加減なことを言わないでくださいなんとかじゃない絶対でなければならないもしもまた様子見なんてことになったら<笑>先生はどう責任を取るつもりですか I was so into what KJ was his like emotion right now. I thought that phone was like in my room and I was like, why is there a phone ringing? While I was yelling, the phone rang. 
since they snatched the receiver up first. Mosh Mosh. Ah, the recording is still going. Sorry. Since they waved us away, telling us we can leave now. Mian went to leave, but I held my ground. I had a responsibility to make sure she stopped saying such vague, ambiguous things. If it didn't look like she was going to say anything substantial, then I'd tell them the truth, even if I had to steal the phone from her. Yes, but I'm still in the hospital. Yes, I'm still in the hospital. But I'm still in the hospital. I'm still in the hospital. My dude's got a chill. I yelled angrily at Sensei and the principal on the other end. I wanted to somehow, some way, convey to them just how dangerous her situation was right now. Until the very last moment, I glared at Sensei. She Sensei was really pressured by the likes of me. Idiot, isn't this the time to feel pressured? Or this isn't the time to feel pressured. I'm like confused in my brain there. <laughs> Now's the time when you give me a firm nod to reassure me. Even so, we've already left things in her hands. At this point, we really can't do anything but pray. Mian shut the door to teacher's lounge. Man, I, I still love how like emotional everybody's getting in this chapter, dude. It's it's insane. Right, so I, I skipped through the article one. It's literally just detailing the definition of child abuse. And it's just hard to read. So I'm just gonna leave that to the side. Alright, statistics. I love statistics. Year 19 redacted. Principal abusers in cases reported to the Ministry of Health and Welfare. Aw. Total, 5,350. Wait, for one person? Mother by blood. 2,000. Oh, this, I guess this is just everybody. Mother not by blood. 203. Father by blood. 1,445. Father not by blood. 488. Year 19 redacted. Instances by type of abuse in cases reports at Ministry of Health and Welfare. Physical abuse. Oh, jeez. Neglect, abandonment of child. 1,728. Psychological abuse, 458. Been from going to school, 75. 311. Was that all the times that Jess Satsuko reported? What the hell, man? It didn't like specify who it was, but in a year, that's how they were. Jeez, she's going through too much, dude. Ugh. This, this, uh, this whole chapter is really rough, man. Not gonna lie. But got what five chapters left i believe so we just finished seven so we got eight nine ten eleven twelve so we're going to be just a bunch of emotional chapters here on out i'm assuming just look forward to it one way or another good or bad and until next time just keep being kind bye